Hello, what's up? You might notice a little sound in the background. That's because I'm outside. You might be able to hear little Sadie's collar jingle. So I'm actually working on our fall garden, AKA putting some soil in and trying to figure out some plants and stuff. And you know, I was wondering, where do you get seeds from? Obviously Home Depot, Lowe's. Well, what about like big time farms? Like where do you farms, hydroponic farms, where do they get their seeds from? And a friend of mine, Daniel Leonard, he was on the podcast a few weeks ago, introduced me to Blake Thaxton. Blake works with Johnny's Selected Seeds. And so today, Johnny's going to talk about kind of how he builds relationships with growers, how he markets their seeds, and also some examples of customers, which if you might remember our episode with Josh Satin, he is actually a customer of Johnny's Selected Seeds. So it's really cool. Kind of everything's all full circle, as you can hear Sadie in the background, our little golden doodle puppy. So anyway, it's a great little conversation. Um, if you're interested in starting a fall garden, or any garden in particular, no matter when you're listening to this, don't forget about our episode with Joe Lample. It's a really cool episode where he talked to us about all things gardening, his PBS show, and a bunch of really cool stuff. Anyway, I'm going to continue looking at this garden and hope you enjoy the podcast with Blake Thaxton. Be sure to check him out. We'll link his social and everything, so check it out. Anyway, this is episode 33 with Blake Thaxton. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Farm Traveler Podcast, Blake Thaxton. How are you doing? Doing just fine. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for being on. So you are with Johnny's Selected Seeds. We've never had a seed rep on before, so this is going to be a really cool conversation. I'm excited to have you on. So uh, tell us a real quick recap about the history of the company, about Johnny's Selected Seeds, and kind of how the whole company kind of came to be. Sure. Um, so the company started in 1973. Uh, the founder of the company is Rob Johnston, and he was 22 years old when he started the company with $500 in his pocket. And uh, he um, started in New Hampshire. So the company is based out of New England. And soon after, about two years later, he moved up to Albion, Maine. And that's where the research farm is currently located. And not too far from there is the business office and the distribution center. And so they've been there since 1975. There's a 120 acre farm there that Rob Johnston bought and he still lives there. Um, and the trial farm is still located at that site. Rob is, uh, of course, the founder of the company and a breeder. And he has been the chairman of the board for Johnny's um, since he turned over the company to the employees. The employees bought the company from him, starting that process um, around 2008 and um, is now 100% employee owned. And he is actually stepping down from being chairman of the board and becoming a full-time retiree at the end of this year. So so Johnny's has kind of uh, been his baby and and uh, he's turned it over to to the to the employees, and and so we're in a bit of a transition. Um, but but the company is basically a vegetable seed company, uh, doing a lot of different vegetables. Um, they've added cut flowers and herbs uh, to the mix, and then also small farm hand tools and supplies. And that's kind of uh, where it all started with with Rob selecting more um, interesting type vegetables. There's just, there were, he found there was a big appetite for um, different stuff, not just your bread and butter type stuff that we're used to in the United States, but also, you know, Asian vegetables and, and uh, other vegetables that you really see um, that are hot in culinary circles. And that's where he kind of found his niche and, and going across the world and finding this, this different stuff. And that's, that's kind of our calling card even still today. Well, cool. Well, I'm sure that'll be a, a very well-earned and a very well-needed retirement for him. That's cool to yeah, hear. Um, so so how exactly did you get started with this? So I know you've got a background in horticulture. So tell us how you got started with Johnny Seed. So, yeah, I um I actually grew up in the suburbs in North Alabama near Huntsville. And my dad uh, was an aerospace engineer. So I the apple fell far from the tree and rolled down a hill a little bit. And, uh, I just didn't, didn't want to do the uh, whole engineer thing. And, um, but my, 
grandfather was a ag economics professor at Auburn University, where I went to school. And I um, started in history education at Auburn and kind of realized pretty quickly that I did love history, but I didn't love the idea of spending the rest of my life in a classroom. Personally, that's great for other folks, but wasn't for me. So I started looking at ag economics naturally because of my grandfather's experience. And he, who's, he's still alive today, lives in Auburn and is retired. And he, uh, I reached out to him for some, some wisdom and counsel on the subject. And he suggested maybe I look at horticulture and went to lunch with him and a professor from Auburn's horticulture department. And basically the, the message from the professor was try it for a semester. So I did and really fell in love with it and um, finished my degrees at Auburn. I got a bachelor's and a master's, more on the ornamental horticulture side. But um, after school, got a job with the University of Florida Extension Service in the Panhandle, Florida, near Pensacola, and worked there for about six and a half years. And that's really where I kind of found my uh, love for vegetable production and and specifically a lot of small farm stuff. The, the Panhandle is not a super well-known big vegetable production area, but it does have pockets of vegetable production. It's more well-known for peanuts and cotton production, more large-scale stuff. And so I was working with a lot of small farms who had just, you know, a high tunnel or a small greenhouse and they were selling at farmer's markets. And so I, uh, I decided, uh, I really liked that and really fell in love with, uh, growing vegetables in protected systems like high tunnels and was doing a lot of fun work with the growers there. And, um, part of that was I worked with the uh, Johnny Seed sales rep who lived in Tifton, Georgia at the time. And, um, he, I would work with him to trial different stuff that Johnny's had and specifically in high tunnels. And, um, so just got to know the company through that. And when he retired, I had uh, the opportunity to apply for the job and fortunately was given the opportunity to come on with Johnny's about a year and a half ago now and made my switch from uh, public, uh, service to, to the private industry. And, um, so now I'm the Southeast sales rep for Johnny's and, um, basically I'm the boots on the ground representative for the company in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and the Carolinas working with our many, many, many customers in the area and, uh, directing them to the products that will work best for their situation. Um, and then also just being kind of a resource for them. That's one thing that I um, really like about the job that's similar to my background in extension is I get to uh, more or less be a, a resource to these growers. A lot of these growers are new and beginning growers and and I can be a, a place that they call and, and ask questions and, and help point them in the right direction. Because what I tell a lot of people is I, I don't know a whole lot, but I know a lot of people and I can help. Um, direct them in the right way and in and, and that way. So so it's been a fun ride. I really enjoy working with Johnny's. It's a great company. And then, of course, enjoyed my whole experience in the university system and in, with Extension. Can't say enough good things about working with Extension and what I was able to learn in that time uh, with the people there and then also with the growers I worked with. Super cool. So what's it been like to kind of build relationships with those grew with those growers and also kind of you mentioned that you might not know the answer, but you know, people that would know the answer. And sure. like one of my favorite things is um, uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's right. So what's it? Yeah. So what's it been like to build those relationships and kind of to offer your knowledge and to build more relationships in the horticulture industry and in kind of your region? Yeah. Uh, it's been great because, you know, when I was with Extension, you're kind of limited to your specific area you're, you're um, assigned to. So I was in one county and then we did some, you know, statewide and regional things. But um, but, you know, so I got to know a lot of people in the University of Florida system and throughout Florida, the growers. But now that I have a much bigger area and then I'm working with, uh, uh, you know, these world class breeding companies that we get seed from. 
I'm, I'm working across the entire country practically with people all across the industry. So it's, I'm a people person. Um, I, I love making relationships and, and connecting the dots on things we have in common. Um, I think that's why I enjoy sales because it's really a lot about just making those relationships and, and earning trust in, in that relationship and that I, you know, I'm not going to steer them in a negative way, but steer them positively to the, to the right thing. And, um, so it's, it's, it's really great just being able to, to make those new relationships, cultivate old relationships and, and, uh, and then count on those resources. And, and so, you know, I kind of have a network of what I consider mentors and people that, um, I can lean on who help me with, uh, uh, different questions I may have. Gotcha. So who exactly do you sell to? I know you mentioned that you kind of sell to small farms, organic sure. farms. What are some examples of people and examples of markets that you kind of are focusing on bringing um, Johnny's seeds to? Sure. Yeah, kind of our niche is what we call our core customer is that grower that is producing on smaller acreage and usually taking their products to direct to the consumer. So you think about a farmer's market type farmer or a um, grower who sells to a restaurant or a grower who is has a CSA community supported agriculture. Those are kind of our core type customers, but we're not limited to that. That's just kind of who, what our company is built around. We select varieties with those people in mind. Um, there's not a lot of companies out there doing that. Most, most seed companies are either geared to a home garden or to large commercial farms. And so we're kind of the, the company that bridges the gap. We still service the home garden. We have an awesome website and our home gardeners can go on there and buy whatever varieties they need. And then we sell to large commercial growers, but, but we, our niche is that, is that small farm that sells direct to the consumer. And then we have a huge, uh, variety of organic seeds. And so we tend to draw in the, uh, organic farms as well, whether they're small or large and sell to them quite a bit as well. Um, and so that gives us a little bit of a different, uh, customer than what you may see for a lot of traditional uh, commercial seed companies. And then the newest thing that, or the thing that I think is growing the fastest is hydroponic growers. And we are one of the go-to sources for um, varieties that work well in hydroponics. And I think that's a, a couple reasons. One, um, we're, we're pretty good at getting seeds out quickly ship to the customer. If you call in an order um, before uh, two o'clock Eastern, one o'clock Central, we can get that shipped out that day. And depending on if you want to pay extra for overnight shipping, you know, you could theoretically get that seed the next day. And for hydroponic growers, that can be really important because um, they, they're doing a lot of turnover. They're trying to, you know, for example, like a lettuce operation, they're trying to grow lettuce in three or four weeks and turn it over and, and, uh, and have, uh, more lettuce coming on the way. So, so it's just a very in time sensitive, uh, production system. And, uh, we're able to work well with that kind of customer. But yeah, typically our main customer is that small farm that is selling directly to the consumer at farmers markets restaurants and CSAs. Okay. That, that's really neat to hear. Um, so I, I'm really interested in hydroponics. So sure. what, what, um, have you noticed anything in particular that have the, that those hydroponic companies are looking for when they look for seeds? Um, yeah, there's some specific things, uh, you know, when it comes to like tomatoes and cucumbers and that kind of production, there's a lot of technology built into the varieties that are available. Uh, they're bred specifically for hydroponics and greenhouse production. So we have some of those things. And, and it's not that those varieties don't work outside. Some of them do. Some of them work both ways. And then some of them don't. Some of them are specifically for uh, uh, 
the the greenhouse and so we have those varieties available usually they're a little bit pricier varieties um because of the the breeding and technology and the the money that's been invested into them and then when it comes to uh you know some of your leafy type varieties um like like lettuce and and you know other greens uh it's there is some breeding that goes into that and technology uh that comes in that way but then also just trialing varieties that work well for that system um and you know you look at specific characteristics i was just in a meeting today talking about what what do we need in a romaine type lettuce that will work well for hydroponics and we talked about um you know the growth of uh or the growth rate the um uh tip burn can be an issue in hydroponic systems and then uh you know one of the lettuce people that doesn't work as much with hydroponics was asking us about um if downy mildew could be an issue and we don't see that as much in our with our customers as you see in the field and in high tunnels so so there are specific things that that these growers look for and we trial for a lot of that. We, you know, our company is called Johnny's Selected Seeds, and that's where that selected part is. We, we trial every variety we put in our catalog and make sure that it works well for what our growers are trying to do. And we don't have a hydroponic facility on our trial farm. So typically for hydroponics, what we do is we work with our growers who are hydroponic producers, or we work with the universities and we've even worked with the University of Florida doing trials with them to uh, best kind of uh, find the varieties that work best in these different hydroponic systems. Gotcha. That's really cool to hear. Yeah. Um, th that's really cool that you'll kind of work with them and do a lot of the research. That's really neat. Um, so in the Southeast, it's hot. There's a lot of pests. It's crazy. The weather so what's it like, what are some challenges that your, your customers kind of have in terms of growing here in the Southeast? Yeah. So like I said, our company's based out of Maine and I like to give our folks in Maine a hard time, you know, the other sales reps that they don't really know what we're dealing with down here. Cause it's just, it's the perfect scenario for pest and disease in the Southeast. And, uh, we, we have weed problems. We have disease issues. We have insect issues because we are high humidity. Uh, we're high heat most of the year. We don't get these super cold winters that, uh, kill back a lot of stuff. You know, you specifically in Florida, part of my territory in South Georgia, you know, there's some years where it doesn't even get cold enough to kill back some of the weeds. And, the, you know, the roots will uh, stay intact and, and the weeds will come back uh, for a second year. So, so you know, we're just dealing with a different animal than, than uh, a lot of other parts of the country. And so we have to work with our growers and with our customers to find stuff that uh, varieties that work really well for them. Um, and one, and that starts with disease resistance and, uh, and heat tolerance and so we work uh to you know for example and tomatoes is one of my favorite crops and we know that in many parts of the southeast tomato spotted wilt virus can be an issue um thrips are going to uh bring that disease in that virus in and they will um, vector that to the tomato plants so you know i like to mention that to my customers and let them know hey i know you want to grow this type of variety, but let's think about something that may have some tomato spotted wilt virus resistance. And not that they need every single variety to have that, but just as a fallback plan, hey, why don't you put in at least a little bit of this variety that has some resistance? So if all else fails and you get a bad outbreak, you will have this variety. And so we kind of look at that for all different crops and different diseases that um, that customers may be dealing with. And then the other thing that we, I see a lot of customers doing is kind of moving for these high value crops that have some really bad disease issues in the Southeast is going to protected agriculture using high tunnels and greenhouses. And I really love that because that's, 
one of the areas I'm very interested in. So they're, you know, essentially, you know, a high tunnel is basically a, a unheated, uncooled greenhouse. Your your only uh, mechanism for cooling and heating is opening and closing the doors. And you're typically growing in the ground, in the soil, in that kind of system. Whereas with a greenhouse, you have active heating and cooling. And you may grow in the soil, but a lot of times you're growing um, in containers or in a hydroponic system. So we see a lot of growers go into high tunnels for these high value crops that have disease issues because more or less, it's like putting a big umbrella over your crop and you get, you can keep the leaves dry. And when you keep the leaves dry, you are uh, making an environment that's not as suitable for those disease problems that we encounter. So it works really well um, for reducing pesticide use and for organic growers who don't have as many uh, options for uh, control. This is a, a good way to do that. And I love it. So it's a lot of fun to work with those growers trying to come up with systems that really work um, here in the southeast, which can be a huge challenge. Yeah, I can imagine. That's really cool that you're kind of working with them to kind of overcome all the obstacles that they might face. Um so I'm I'm just looking at y'all's website and you mentioned that you all have um you have tools, you have greenhouse equipment. What kind of spurred Johnny Seed to start creating their very own supplies of equipment and stuff to supply for their growers? Yeah, I think the main reason um is we there's just not a lot of avenues out there for a small grower. You know, you hear the term, I don't know if you've heard the term market grower, a market gardener, but there's not a lot of uh especially you know, 10, 15 years back, there wasn't a lot of uh, options for for getting hand tools and uh, or just, you know, man operated or man powered tools. Whereas, you know, you can find stuff, you can find tractor implements and things like that in rural ag communities, but you couldn't find these, uh, you know, an old fashioned wheel hoe that's actually been improved upon um, to help you with weeding a market garden or weeding an organic uh, production system or um, I don't know a lot of people have seen on YouTube nowadays in social media the paper pot transplanter which is like a just a mechanical planter that you pull and it lays out these plants with these paper chains and they're already specifically spaced and that can reduce a lot of labor for these market gardeners and and small farms that you know, labor can be, labor's a big deal in every part of agriculture, even down to that small grower. And so, um, so we, we just wanted to be an avenue for the, the small farm to be able to find some of those kind of, kind of, uh, tools and supplies that, um, at the same place they buy their seeds. And we've really improved that over the, the last, uh, 10 years or so. Um, and we even have, there's a grower not too far from where Johnny's is at named Elliot Coleman. And he was once a board member for Johnny's and he's done a lot of innovation on tools. And I've heard him say before where he basically, uh, said all the innovation for agriculture was done on large scale conventional side for the last hundred years. And so, you know, they were using small growers were using tools that uh, the, the technology was 100 years old. And so now we're really starting to see the technology pick up and the innovation pick up and, and we can be in a, a place where where those growers can find those and know that they're getting a quality product because we test all of that stuff. We have specific product managers who go out and we have a little trial garden where they test these different tools and make sure that they're good quality and make sure that they're going to last for the long run for these customers. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you guys saw um, kind of an empty space in the market and kind of took advantage of it to supply some stuff for your growers. That's really, sure. really cool. Uh, so you, you said that one of your customers is actually an old um, guest on our show, Josh Satin. So yeah. have you worked with Josh before? I mean, what's that been like working with him? So I haven't worked a ton with Josh yet because I haven't met him. Um, he obviously buys stuff from us. I, uh, I found him, I think, on a lot of our growers, especially growers like Josh who are market gardeners or market growers, small farms. They really utilize social media a lot. 
And, you know, I mean, that's what kind of their market niche is being the farmer that their customers know. And, um, and so that's, you know, that's where I found them. I found them on social media. I, I use social media a lot to kind of see what my customers are doing and see where we can improve. And so I, I saw a video or a post that Josh put up that he was, uh, he had drawn a label that looked like our seed packet. And I think he put his name on it or something. It was, it was kind of funny. So I reached out to him and then, um, and I've, uh, communicated with him that way. And I, we're actually going to try to meet, I think next week, I'm going to be up his way for a conference. So we're going to try to get together and, and that's the part of the job I really like just meeting these guys. I mean, he seems like a super innovative guy and guy just, you know, doing something he really loves and, and, uh, making it work for himself. And, uh, I, I love meeting folks like that and seeing what they're doing. So, so it's, that's a fun part of the job. I bet. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah. That's how we found him on, on Instagram. I was browsing for, um, for guests and happened to find him, his YouTube channel was, was glad he got on. So that's really cool. You got to go see him and talk to him. Um, he, he's doing a lot of really good stuff. So for sure. Um, so what are some future plans you guys have at Johnny select seeds? Yeah, we're going to continue doing what we've been doing, selecting the best varieties for our customers. We, we trial everything and always are trialing new varieties that come out from our vendors. We're working with all the world class breeders across the world. Uh, uh, some of the Dutch companies, Bijo, Enzizaden, Reichswan, and Cicada Seed, and um, Pan American Seed, all these different companies. We, they're sending us their stuff that they think we would be interested in, and we trial them to, to make sure that uh, that's going to work well for us. And, and then uh, in the Southeast, you know, for me personally, I'm just a year and a half into the job, and I'm really starting to feel like I'm, uh, learning my customer base and getting to know a lot of the key players throughout the territory. So my focus will be to continue to get around the territory, see what folks are doing, and then also um, kind of getting involved with whatever learning opportunities there are and trying to uh, kind of provide my services to that and, and um, you know, helping folks, you know, through, through get, getting them the right varieties uh, to to be as uh, productive as they possibly can. Gotcha. Well, that's really good to hear. Uh, so one question I'd like to ask everybody sure. is their thoughts on the farmer-consumer relationship. So I know you work with a lot of growers yeah. who are trying to supply valuable products and valuable crops to consumers. So what are your thoughts on right now in 2019 on the farmer-consumer relationship? Yeah, I think um, personally, I think the – the consumer just has no clue what goes into getting their fresh fruits, vegetables, uh, commodity crops, animal products, whatever it is. They have no idea what it's like because they have just been so far removed from a uh, agrarian uh, civilization. And so, you know, anything we can do to better help them understand what it is that is going on in agriculture is a good thing. I, I think that the, you know, the bickering in within uh, agriculture, you know, organic versus conventional and that stuff, I wish that stuff would go away and we could just more or less educate our consumers on what we're doing. Cause I think there's a lot of good things going on. Um, with with everything in agriculture and if we could uh be more uh better educators and just help folks understand that uh good things and the good people there's a lot of great stories out there and i think that's what's great about the podcast that you're doing is getting out the stories of of different people in the industry and what they're doing and how that helps everyone's daily life and and consumption of the food that that we need to survive well thanks man yeah I, I think it's all about kind of bridging the gap and doing the best we can to at least people in the ag industry to kind of educate consumers as, as best we can and hoping that those consumers can kind of do some better research and and reach out to farmers or reach out to people on social media that know where their food is coming from for sure so that, that's a lot of really good points well um so 
So Blake, if people want to learn more about Johnny's Seed, if they want to buy some of Johnny's Seeds, where can they go to find out more information? Yeah, we go to our website, obviously, johnnyseeds.com. Um, we got a really nice website. Our web marketing folks do awesome. They're, they're some of the best in the industry. Very easy website to navigate. Um, so you can find a lot of our products there. And then also, if you just want to follow me uh, personally, if you're in the southeast or just interested in what I'm doing, um, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's more of a kind of personal business account. It's at, at Blake underscore Thaxton. Or you can follow me on um, Instagram. And uh, that's uh, Johnny's Blake. And you can find that there and, and see what we're we're doing and I'm always posting pictures of what we have uh available, what I'm seeing from our customers and and then uh, uh just neat stuff I see in agriculture. Deal. Well that's super cool, Blake. Well man, thanks for being on. Uh thanks for we'll hopefully me. talk to you soon. Tell Josh we said hey and we wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. All right, man. I appreciate it, Trevor, and uh hope uh the podcast keeps growing. Hey, thanks man. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening. This is episode 33 with Blake Thaxton. If you want to follow Blake, check him out on Instagram, which is his username is Blake underscore Johnny's and on Twitter at Blake underscore Thaxton. And also check out Johnny's Selected Seeds at johnnyseeds.com. And also, you know, it's getting close to Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving's coming around the corner. So you're starting to kind of buy stuff on your Christmas list. If you're interested, we have a deal with Herschel Supply Company. They make a lot of really cool clothing and accessory items. I actually have like their little slim wallet, which is really cool. If it's like four credit cards in there and a little bit of cash. So, you know, you're not like breaking your butt with a super, super three inch thick wallet, you know, like your dad has or something. So anyway, we have a deal with Herschel Supply Company. Go to our website, thefarmtraveler.com and go to the homepage and you will see in our partner section. So with Herschel's, if you follow the link, you will get free shipping on any order over $30. So it's a really cool brand. Check them out just in time for Christmas. Hope you enjoy it. Um, so anyway, thanks for listening to this podcast and we'll see you next week.